Hi folks and welcome to this eighth critique video and today I'm going to be discussing five images by Rich Silver of some quiver trees in Namibia. Uh, so this video is going to be focused more on composition because these are nice simple subjects so I'd like to discuss maybe making slightly more structured compositions and, uh, and forget about the, the processing for this video. Uh, so let's get started. So here are those five images that Rich sent over. We've got two taken around twilight, a couple of night shots uh, with a bit of light painting and a sunset or sunrise. Uh, so if I have a look at them in Photoshop and we're gonna focus on composition here because when you do have these simple subjects, it makes the composition even more important. Uh, and uh, this is one of my, my favorites of the set. Um, I love this little visual motif here of, of what I assume is a planet um, framed by the branches. A uh, very strong focal point and a, a really nice idea. Um, similarly, it's, it's nice to have silhouettes, which are effectively 2D cutouts, if you like, that generate a sense of perspective. So you have this, uh, this close tree, a mid-ground tree, and a distant tree. So although it's potentially a very 2D image, you do get that sense of, of depth thanks to the uh, changing scale of the trees. Um, but because it is quite simple, it does uh, expose one issue, which is the interference here between the trees. I think in an ideal world, they would be separate from one another, which may be uh, easier to, to say than actually achieve. Um, but certainly that's something that I would look to do. Uh, and in an ideal world, I think that third tree would be uh, in this gap here. You can just imagine how that would um, create a, an almost perfect composition, almost like a jigsaw puzzle of these trees um, fitting together. Uh, so maybe that was possible, maybe it wasn't, um, but that's certainly what I would attempt. Um, but a really nice image all the same, very nicely handled, um, nice, nice simple editing. Um, I did notice one minor problem, which is uh, this uh, ghosting effect, which I assume is because the uh, tripod or camera was knocked partway through the exposure. Um, but I do like that shot. Okay, so next up we've got uh, effectively a lone tree. Um, obviously there's the trees in the background, but the light painting very much makes this a, a lone tree to me. Um, with the Milky Way in the background. So I guess this is looking out on the edge of the Milky Way because there's no galactic core in the shot. Um, unfortunately, the tree is out of focus. And um, if you were ha having to choose between the stars or the tree being out of focus, I would, um, I'd have the stars out of focus because the, the tree is such a strong subject. It really has to be sharp. Um, obviously you could uh, focus bracket here, or it may even be possible to, to focus slightly past the tree and get both the tree and the stars in focus. Um, so uh, one, one for next time there. Uh, compositionally, um, I'm just going to draw quickly on the, the two um, elements that we have here. And you can see that they are mostly uh, balanced to the right hand side, or at least cumulatively they are. Um, and the tree is actually only just slightly off center, which I find um, slightly detracts uh, from the shot, to be perfectly honest. Um, so you can actually fix that fairly simply just by cropping. Uh, so I'll do that quickly. Uh, where's my crop tool? There it is. Um, so I'm just going to bring down the top here as well because I think the uh, main interest is is this uh, band of stars on the right and then drag in that left hand side as well. So we are going for more of a rule of thirds composition um, and uh, that's not because I'm trying to achieve that, it's just because in this case that, that looks right to me um, and, I, and I think that does make the composition a bit stronger. And then if we move on to this third image, we've got these beautiful uh, trees again with the, the Milky Way running through the center of the image and the large megalanic cloud here. Uh, technically, this, this looks pretty good. Um, a nice balance of, of the, the light painting there with the uh, exposure for the stars. Again, maybe slightly out of focus here, so um, that, that could be worked on, um, but otherwise very, very well shot. Um, 
I'd love to see three trees here. Uh, it's a bit of a, a classic idea. I think I mentioned it in the last video that uh, threes are better than twos. Uh, and sometimes that's the case and sometimes it, it isn't. Um, certainly there's uh, there's a shot in, in a second um, which has just two trees that would work absolutely fine um, without a third tree. Um, but uh, in this case, you've got two similarly sized trees and this sort of semi-symmetry, um, but it doesn't, doesn't quite work for me and I'd love to just have a third tree in the middle or, or have some significant difference between the two trees um, to create a sense of asymmetry um, because it just isn't quite there uh, and you do have this third tree sticking out the bottom there or if, is it a bush I can't quite tell actually um, yeah another tree and uh, that to me is uh, is distracting in fact it, it looks like that might have been painted separately um, I probably would have just left that one unpainted uh, so that it catches the eye a little less. Uh, and, and maybe uh, this is going to work a bit better um, with, a, with a crop as well. Um, I don't generally like portrait frames that are too tall and thin. Um, a 4 by 5 type ratio usually works a bit better. Uh, so I'd probably crop something like that. Okay, so here are those two trees. So here we've got two, not three, although you could argue this silhouette in the background is that third tree, but um, two that are the clear focus. And uh, I think that compositionally that does work better. Um, I get the sense from the lean of both of these trees that the shot isn't quite level. So I would just uh, correct that. And again, I'm gonna lose some of the top of the frame because I think the trees start to get a little bit lost. Um, so something like that, and actually maybe I'd crop more like that, and then just uh, distort the sky or, or clone to uh, to fill in that um, that extra bit there. Um, I will just do that to the really quick and nasty way, uh, just for the sake of it. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a nice image that and. Um, a nice wide perspective and a good sense of perspective on the trees. Let's see if we've got focus. Uh, well, this time it looks much better anyway. Um, maybe just just missing it on this foreground tree. Uh, and actually that, that background tree in the shadow there, the silhouette is actually really nice. Um, I like that little detail. Uh, this rock creeping in on the right, it's a little bit distracting and, and actually um, you almost want to crop that out entirely. Um, you know, to do some, something like that. Um, and whilst the two trees do work well, um, I think it would be better if they were separated so you could step off to the right and, and hopefully um, find some clear sky between the two of them. Of course, this rock may come into frame even more and create more of an issue. So uh, perhaps this was the, uh, was the best compromise, um, but just a few ideas to work on there. And finally onto this sunset silhouette that absolutely screams Africa. Um, the problem with silhouettes uh, is you really, really have to get them right. Every little detail matters tenfold when you have such a, a simple scene. And as beautiful as these silhouettes uh, are and, and can be, um, it does put that extra emphasis on, on the little details. So we've got little um, highlights here and there um, that, that are slightly distracting. I'm not sure if they're actually a problem, but um, you certainly notice them more than you would minor issues in, in other images. Um, I'd love to see the uh, tree trunk running through what I assume is a gap just here so that you could see equal amounts of, of the trunk on either side. I just find it slightly awkward it running into the slope there. The, uh, the stack of rocks here is so centrally placed and so physically heavy uh, in the image um, that it competes a little bit too much for me with that tree. Um, so I, I'd love to have a slightly cleaner um, footing to the to the tree, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and then lastly, uh, this is one that you can fix. Um, if you've got a lot of time, there's a lot of dust in this image. Um, probably the most I've ever seen in a photo, I have to say. Um, if I just um, apply some adjustments here, then you will soon see them appear. Um, so there really is a lot of dust. Um, absolutely masses of it so you need to get out get get in there with the uh, the spot spot healing brush or um, the, the spot healing brush in Photoshop is actually even better and uh, do those one by one because uh, if you have a perfectly clean gradient like that it has to be clean um, so uh, yeah a bit of bit of work to do there but also not too difficult to to sort that one out um, so 
really brilliant subjects uh difficult um compositionally because although they are simple all these little detail issues uh, matter all the more so um challenging actually to get these right and i'm sure there was no uh, point at which you didn't have to make some form of compromise um, but hopefully that's uh, that's given you a, a few ideas should you uh, manage to get out to these trees again or otherwise uh, end up shooting um, similar lone trees in the future.